Hello! So today I thought I'd show you a tutorial on how to make this bag. This is a fun bag, really useful, and uh, I've called it that shoulder bag, and I have done a pattern for it. Um, it looks a little bit like a backpack, but in fact it's only got the one strap on it. And that's because very often when I pick up my backpack, I just sling it over one shoulder. So I thought, why wouldn't I just have a bag with one strap? So it's called that shoulder bag. Um, and it's got a drawstring around the top with a little casing that we make. Uh, so all in all, I thought that would be quite a good bag to show you. There's a couple of tricky bits on it. So I thought I'd, if I do a video, you'll know how to make it. I do have a pattern. It's called that shoulder bag. And it's available to purchase and download from my website gourmetquilter.com and um, so uh, on the pattern it tells you here how much fabric you need and here is a cutting chart so that you can tells you what size is to cut from your fabric so I've already gone ahead and done some of the cutting so I've got some pieces here that are already cut to the strips and things according to the pattern and then for my main feature fabric which in this delicious one that I've made is, um, is that bluey background fabric. Um, for the one I'm going to show you today, I found this wonderful fabric with all sorts of London things all over it. So it tells you in the pattern to cut out your main feature fabric, 14 inches by 30 inches, and also a piece of batting that same size, and also a piece of lining fabric. So I'm lining mine with this lovely grey. And so I've actually gone ahead and done a little bit of this because uh, I didn't think we'd want to be here all day because it is going to take a while. It's not a really fast bag to make, but it is a fun bag. Um, so it tells you at the beginning of the pattern to lay your three things together, your lining, your batting, and your main feature fabric, and to do some quilting. Just And I've just suggested some straight line quilting. Of course, you can quilt it however you like. If you'd like to see how to use a walking foot on my machine here, um, you can see this fairly bulky looking foot but this is a walking foot um, and when we're using just the sewing machine to do straight line type quilting the walking foot is really helpful it's helpful in lots of other areas as well but particularly with quilting because what it does that walking foot is it gives you how can I explain this underneath your, your fabric uh, sorry on your sewing machine you've got your little feed teeth that pull the fabric through as you sew what the walking foot does is gives you an equivalent so that it's pushing the fabric through from the top as well. So when we've got this sort of spongy layer of a batting in between, it helps hold it firm and feed it evenly through. So that's why the walking foot. So I've done a video on how to do some straight line quilting using a walking foot, in case you're interested in quilting tips and techniques number 148. Um, but for today, I've done my quilting. You can probably see it better on the back side here of my work. You can see that I've just done straight lines approximately an inch apart um, and now I've got to trim that down it also while we're showing you the quilting um, says that you need to have cut some pieces that are five inch wide by 12 inches long of, again of your lining of your outside fabric your color not your main feature fabric and two layers of batting and um, the two layers of batting this is the, going to be the base of the bag just to give it um, some extra strength along in the, in the bottom of the bag so again that gets trimmed down as well so don't panic if things move a little bit when you're quilting because we have cut things a little bit larger than we actually need so for the main feature piece we need to cut that down and i better just check my notes because i don't want to tell it to you wrong it was um 14 inches by 30 we're cutting it down to 12 and a half inches high by 27 and a half inches long so I'll just get my ruler and everything and just show you because this is quite large perhaps you haven't been cutting things quite as large as this so initially I'm going to cut my length because my ruler is long enough and I'm going to cut it I'm just going to trim off one end first I know that I've got that much to trim off so that's okay and I'm actually going to line it up so that I can see the markings on my board with that end of my board so I've lined that up right on the very last line I'm not sure if you can see that okay and I'm just making sure things are sitting fairly straight and that that edge is straight down there and yes the machine is a little bit in the way 
And now I want it to be 27 and a half inches. Because my board's around this way and I'm numbering from the far end, I can come along here because it's sitting on the end line and just trim that off at 27 and a half inches. So that's that done. So we can take that strip away. So we've now got a piece that's nicely 27 and a half inches long. And now we need to cut the other bits. Now that's longer than most rulers. Even my long ruler is only 24 inches long. So, and you may not have such a big board as I've got either. So sometimes we have to fold the work to be able to trim it down. So I'm going to fold it now. And now I've got a nice straight edge to work with now. Um, and I'm going to just line it up with a line on my board so I can see where I'm at. And have it double there, sitting nice and straight. And we're going to just trim this edge off here. Now, so, so this is quite thick to be cutting through now. So just hold your ruler nice and firm. And it may be, if you need to, have something to stop it slipping around a little bit. But mostly holding it nice and firm. And cutting through quite a big thickness here. So perhaps a little bit more pressure than you're used to applying. And you can just trim that away. And now we want this to be 12 and a half inches this way. So I'm going to come I'm actually on my line number of 10. So I just need to come to 22 and a half, which is the 12 and a half. And I can line that up here. And again, I can just cut that bit, bit of extra pressure to get through with all that batting in there. Um, and so that's that all done. That's now trimmed to the right size. Well, while we're trimming, we might just trim this base bit as well. Now this one started out at 5 inches by 12. And we're going to just trim that down to 4 inches wide by 11 inches long. So we can line this up so that it's sitting fairly straight. And just trim off roughly half an inch each side to bring it down to the 4. Just tidies up all those little edges that you get when you're quilting. Turn your work around and this time we want this to be 11 inches long. We're going to round the corners as well on this one. Um, so again, just trim off at one end, bring your ruler along 11 inches and trim off at the other end. And now we're going to just round those corners. So you can do this on, on your pattern. There'll be a shape somewhere in your pattern, probably won't look quite like this, um, with, the, with the rounded corners. You, don't, you can use that as a guide if you'd like to, or you can just round your corners. It doesn't really matter too much at this stage. So I'm actually just going to round my corner. So I'm coming down a couple of inches and I'm just going to cut that around just one corner to start with. And then I'm going to fold that over and round the other side of the corner in the same way so that you get a similar rounding. So it doesn't really matter what the round is as long as you kind of got something similar. So you can see there that it's like that. So now I'm going to fold it over to meet the other end and again just trim those corners off to match. And so now I've got a nice rounded end piece which as you can see we've used in the bag here to get that nice sort of rounded ends on the bag. So we've done all their trimming, get rid of all these little bits and pieces. And now we need to just go to the sewing machine. Now I've left my walking foot on from when I did the quilting um, because I wanted to be able to uh, use it. Because I'm using sewing with the batting inside here, it will just help things feed through nice and evenly. So I've got this walking foot on, which does make it a little bit harder for us to see where our quarter inch is. But I think you can work it out. And I know that for me, if I can see the fabric in the little gap in my walking foot, then I'm pretty much on about a quarter of an inch. It's not absolutely critical on this one though, but you want to have a quarter inch seam if you can. So I'm just going to do my straight seam along here. You can see that that walking foot just helps it feed through nicely. And I am doing a little reverse back stitch at each end because we're going to be doing a little bit of fiddly stuff. We don't want that seam 
to pop undone. And now because that seam is actually going to be exposed inside the bag, I'm just going to zigzag over that. If you've got a zigzag on your machine, a little overcast, or you might have an overlocker or something, uh, just make sure that the foot you're using can take the swing of the needle. Uh, you wouldn't like to break a needle because it wasn't able to do that. So this one can take this swing, so that's great. So I'm now just going to pop that through so that I'm overcasting over my raw edges just to keep them from fraying. So now I've got a nice tidy little seam that's going to be uh, kept tidy because we've done that nice little bit of zigzag to overcast it and hold all those raw edges together. So now we're going to get to the tricky part of putting the base in. So we want this to be out the right way and because this is a one-way fabric we want to make sure that we're putting the base in the bottom not in the top. And we, so we're wanting it to sit like that. Now, on this bag, the way I've done it so that it gets a nice base on it, we've got this seam which we're binding a bit later on as well. So we want this seam to be sitting to the outside. Normally our seams go on the inside, but this time it's to the outside. So initially, to be able to pin that shape into the bottom, I've got my seam here, so I'm using that as a, a marker point, and opposite that, so I just fold it with the seam at one end, and pop a pin in. This is called quarter pointing or quarter marking because we're going to mark the four quarter air points around this sort of circle type thing. So now I'm going to bring that pin to where the seam sits so that I can get the halfway mark out each side this way. So that we'll end up, if I pop a pin in where the seam is, with a pin at each quarter. And that will help us position this base in. And it, you can do this for circles, you, any sort of ovals, anything that's kind of got a bit of a rounded edge on it. And the same thing now, you want to mark your quarter point so that you can match it up on your base. So fold it in half and mark these two on the fold, each one each side. And again, in half that way, so that you can get the quarter marking point on the base. So if you do this, this will help a lot with positioning because things are a little bit <clears throat> tricky when you're going around a curve. So there I've got my four pins at the quarter points and four pins here at quarter points. Now we want that seam point, wherever that's gone, to be halfway along and we want it so that it's, you want your outside to be facing down at the moment. And so halfway along one of those sides is where you want your seam because that's going to be the back of your bag. So you want the seam in here to the back of your bag. And we're just going to, you can pull one of those pins out and now pin that at that quarter point. And now go around and match up the other quarter points. And pop your pin in holding them. Let's get these in and then you'll see that that makes things a little bit easier than just going around trying to make sure it's all sitting right. So that's now sitting basically where you want it and um, because we've got a straight bit coming along here we can pop another pin along here and yes this is an area that I do use my pins. Some of you will know that I'm not a fan of pinning everything. And these pins are probably going to get me, because that's why I don't like pins. Now, we've kind of pinned the straight areas, and then there's these curves. So what we need to do now is make sure that that's all sitting and ease that in a little bit. This is possibly slightly bigger, but you just want to ease it in so that it sits and eases around that curve. And you may find you want to put a couple of extra pins just to hold everything together because we're going to be sewing this and if it's held together nicely it'll be much easier for you to sew rather than just hoping that it's going to work its way in. It, sadly it doesn't just work its way in nicely. 
Okay, so we'll just keep going around doing this to all of your curves here. Might stop there for a moment. So here I've got all my pins in. You can see that I've done a little bit of what we call easing to fit that curve around at each end there. And now I'm ready to sew. So by putting your pins in straight in from the outside, you can sew right up to those pins. You can actually even sew over them if you're careful, but certainly up to them before you need to remove them. So now I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch my quarter inch seam allowance. So this seam is all on the outside. It's meant to be on the outside. So I'm just going to start in this straight area on the back and I'm hoping you can still see this. It's a little bit fiddly. And stick with your quarter inch seam allowance. And oops, got the wrong stitch on. We just want a straight stitch. So I'm taking that first pin out, a little back stitch, and then I'm going to come all the way around. So the straight bits are quite straightforward. And then as you get to the curve, just start letting it feed its way around. Keep an eye on those bits and pieces. And as you can see, because we've pinned it quite well, that's working quite nicely. So then you, need, you may need to rearrange this as you come around the curve. Just keep an eye that, that all your edges are sitting together around that curve. And you just got to go all the way around, just carefully, little bit by little bit, making sure that's all sitting nicely on the underside as you go. As I said, a little bit fiddly, take your time. If you've got enough pins in, it really won't be too hard for you. Yep. So here I am, I've gone around the bend, and I'm coming back up the straight. And I'm just do a little zigzag back stitch, and it's all done. So I've managed to stitch that in. It's not looking too bad. There's a couple of tiny little wobbles, but I'm not going to worry about them too much because we're going to be coming back later and popping the binding on as well, which will give us another line of the sewing. If you've got some really bad wobbles, then I would suggest that you fix them up. And it does happen, so don't panic. Just adjust. So that's ready for us now to do the next step. As you can see, that's sitting quite nicely, that little bag already. So we've managed to get the base in our bag, which is great. We now need to make a, um, a bit ready to make this loop that the handle goes through and also the little tabs that form the casing um, for our cord to go on later on. So to do that, you were um, asked to cut out a piece that was a strip that was two and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric or 42 inches long. Um, and we're going to press that in. So I've pressed most of it, but I'll just show you how I've gone about that. So I've just actually just finger pressed it in half all the way along the length. And then I've brought the raw edges into the middle and ironed them. And and then I've just gone along and I've pressed that over so that it's sitting nicely so that those folded edges are together. And then we're just going to stitch that along both sides of that. So it's just a matter of stitching it down each edge there just with a straight stitch all the way along and all the way back. We don't need perhaps quite as much length as we've got but that's what we're working with. So I'm just coming down the second side of my piece with my tabs. So you probably can't really see that but I've got a line of sewing on each side of the folds. And now we need to, to do some cutting. The pattern tells you all this, of course. We need to cut some lengths from that. As I said before, we won't need all of it, 
but we need a reasonable amount of it. So we've got to cut, just trim off the end where they probably still got the selvages on, and you need to cut a five inch piece. Um, this is going to be used for the loop on the back of the bag here where the handle goes through. So one five inch length, and then we need th six three inch lengths, and this is to form the casing on the top band of the bag. So we'll, we won't be needing them just yet, but I'll probably just cut them now while I'm here. That's three, and we need another three, and we can pop them aside to use a bit later. So that's it, and we don't actually need that other piece of length there. You might find some other use for it. So, and then we need to do a little, another little fiddly bit. We need to, to, to cut some fabric for the binding, because we're going to bind over this seam where we've popped the base of the bag in. And it, because it's it's showing, it's on, it's an exposed uh, type of edge, and because it's going round curves, if we just cut a straight binding strip, like we do often for our quilts, um, it's not going to ease around those curves nicely. So we have to cut this one on the bias. Now on the bias means on the diagonal, and I've already cut mine, which means I can't show you exactly. But what I did was I had a strip of fabric that was about ten inches wide, about or a quarter of a yard, or something like that and these pieces have all come from from that so you can see how I've cut them so it was just a long strip of fabric and often on your board there is a marking that's at 45 degrees but basically it's just going to run straight through the points of the squares that are on your your board and so you, if we're going to cut them two and a half inches wide so if you can work out where two and a half inches on your ruler I might turn that over so you can see the markings better even though some of them are coming off. So I've got a, a half inch there and then I can come in two inches. So if I was to line that two and a half inch line up with with a marking on my board for the initial cut and then I can cut straight through there but as, as I said I've already cut these and then I would just slide that along again and do the next two and a half and cut it so that you can see how they've come out and what if it was on on the straight it would have I got a straight piece of material here I think I have just to show you what I mean I've got a strip here that I've cut for something else and that's a straight piece so there's not a lot of give in there there's a little bit when you pull it because it's a woven fabric when it's cut on the bias or the diagonal there's a lot of give in it and that's that will allow it to then curl around some of the shapes without buckling too much. So that's why we do it on the bias. It is slightly more complicated but worth doing so that you get a nicer finish at the end. So now because I've cut short lengths we need about 30 inches altogether. Um, I'm just going to join those so they will line up like that. So when you're joining them just with your quarter inch seam but have it so that your little points are sticking out at each end so that where it intersects is your quarter inch in from the edge so that it'll sit quite nicely. So I'll just quickly join these up. And I just need to join the other one as well. Again, so just lay that so the points are sticking out at each end. At much the same way as you would join any other binding. And I'm just going to press those seams open so that, <coughs> oh, excuse me, so that they sit nice and flat as we go around. You could have a long strip of course but you would need to cut diagonally through a, like a whole meter of fabric or something which seems a ridiculous amount so I think a couple of joins that can get absorbed are quite acceptable in this area and because we've joined it that way we've probably you've got these little points that 
just stick out. So I would just come along and trim those off because they're just really unnecessary. And now we've got our binding ready to go on to our bag. First of all though, having made that, the tab for the loop at the bottom of the bag, we can position that so it sits, I'm going to undo this maybe, you can see where that goes. So what we're trying to do is create a loop that sits with its ends in, in the binding, right over the back. So this is the centre seam of my bag. So if I take this one, which is the one we're going to be positioning it on, and we want to position it so that it's probably a couple of inches in between. And this tab is a touch long so that we've got a little bit of room to move here. And I would pop a couple of pins in there just to hold it. And you want that to sit straight there. So if you we've got that a bit far over that side. If you kind of do a little fold here, it'll sit so that those ends are sitting nice and straight there for you. And I would actually now stitch that in position, so just uh, just so that you can take the pins away because they're just going to get in the way when we try and pop the binding on. So right over the seam line that we had previously done, which was about a quarter of an inch in, just run it through so that that catches in place. It's only a little holding row of stitches. So. And I would just trim off those ends now so that they level with your seam allowance. And now you've got your loop sitting there ready for when we want to pop a strap through it. But first of all, we've got to pop our binding on. So the binding. We need to make sure we've got it around the right way because we've got those seams in it. We want them to be on the inside, not the outside. And because I've cut it this way, I probably actually need to cut that edge off there. We might just, oops, I'm going to get in a mess here. Might just trim that down a, a little bit. We've got more length here than we need. As I said, you need somewhere in the order of 30 inches, and I've got a bit more than that. So I'm going to cut it because I want that my angle actually going the other way on that piece. Like that. And I'm just going to fold over probably about half an inch of that edge there. And again, we don't need that little tail that's sticking out, so we can trim that point off. And now we're probably just about ready to go. So what we're going to do is sew this on like you would a binding on a quilt. So start somewhere that's kind of straightish, so that it's a little bit easier to manage. We're going to sew it. I'm going to stop when I get to about level with the opposite point there, and then I'm going to fold that over. I'll do it so that you can see, and start sewing a little bit further down, leaving a little bit open like that. And then we're going to stitch that double, just like when you're putting it onto a quilt, all the way around until we get back and tuck the end in. Um, and hopefully with this bias it will just sit nicely going around for you. So again, take your time, don't feel stressed, and you need to, sew. we're going to be hand sewing it down like you do with quilt bindings. Um, even I haven't worked out a way to do it comfortably on the machine yet. So we're starting there, just a quarter of an inch in, as we do. So I'm going to go to about there and stop. Now I'm going to fold that over and I'm just going to leave a gap because I want to be able to tuck my other end in when I get around and then start sewing through all the, the thicknesses. Just here. You can pop some pins in if you like to. Um, I don't really like pins, so I don't use them too often. And I'm now just going to ease that around. So again, a little bit fiddly, but take your time. It's not too bad. Worth doing.
and just keep pulling this bit out of your way as you come around this this curve. So your edges are staying level and a very slight amount of um, tension on the binding but you don't want to pull it too tight because it'll cause other problems but just so that it's sitting nice and firm on the edge there. And so continue on all the way around. So I'm nearly around the end. I'm on this second curve coming around towards my starting point. So exciting. Okay, now I'm just going to overlap that over where I started. Oops, make sure that points down. So I'm, I've overlapped the initial point that we did there now. And I'm going to tuck this into this little folded bit here. So I'm just going to trim that off shorter than where I started sewing so that it'll sit in quite nicely. So just snip that off, tuck that in and bring that fold. Probably hard for you to see in the black. And then just keep sewing until I meet up with my starting point from there. And there we've gone all the way around. And so we've got that binding which will now curl quite nicely when we pull it out and around. And we're just going to have to slip stitch that. Now at this little point where we started you find you've got several layers. So I'm actually just going to trim some of the fabric back at that overlapping point. And maybe just a hint of that little bit of batting because there's a lot going on there. And it's just making it a little bit hard. For that batting but that will now curl right over and you'll be able to slip stitch that down right over on your sewing line of where you've put that on so that needs to be slip stitched down now and and then i'll show you the next step <laughs> 